name of Jesus. Jam your hands together and celebrate the presence of the Holy Spirit while you take your seat as kings and priests in God's presence. Hallelujah. Begotten to become more like Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, champions. Good morning, champions. Happy new month. Welcome to the tenth month, the month of God's authority, the revelation of his authority. If you're looking forward to encounter supernatural authority, you can jam your hands together and celebrate the grace of God who has brought us into the month of October. God is faithful. Hallelujah. Welcome to the assembly of the God begotten. You cannot be tired of hearing that because until you and I come alive and under, in the understanding and awareness that we've been begotten of God, there are things that we will still not be able to live above. We've still been looking at our begotten of love series and last, was it last week, last two weeks, last week we talked about Leo, today we go back to our text in John chapter 15 verse 12 and to give us an explanation 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 say this is my commandment this is Jesus speaking that you love one another as I have loved you and 1 Corinthians 13 5 has been 13 generally has been trying to give us an explanation of what love means Today, our focus is on that verse 5, the, the very line that says, love keeps no record of wrongs. We talked about Leo last week. I had a picture of a record of wrongs. I'm expecting it because, can you see the guy? Can you see his face? You know, we sit down and we try to recall, what did my husband do? What did my wife do? That my son. We talked about Leo last week. The truth is, when you are constantly irritated by Leo, you, we said Leo is that guy that seems to have the perfect button. You know, you are calm, cool, collected, everybody's looking at you and seeing Queen Elizabeth III. You are all together until Leo shows up and you literally fly off the handle. So we said when you are constantly irritated by Leo, you are likely to feel resentment towards that person. And eventually, that resentment is going to lead you to keeping a record of wrongs about all the mistakes Leo has ever made. What do we do with our records? We use that record to justify why we are mad at Leo. Because sometimes you just feel the need to explain why you want to take this man and throw him out the window. Why we should even be madder at him. And why Liel should be grateful to us for not giving him what he really deserves. So our records of wrongs, of Liel's wrongs, makes our anger towards Liel to feel righteous and justified. And sometimes recounting the many times that we, the things we have suffered at the hands of Liel gives us the illusion of correcting Liel by shaming him into wisdom. Follow me. But well, here's the caveat. When we create Leels out of people as a result of our failure to love them appropriately, they indirectly they turn us into the kind of persons we wouldn't want to be. How do I explain this very point? When you have a Leel, sometimes you feel the need to start explaining the woes you have suffered in the hands of Leo, at the hands of Leo. From that point on, if I'm trying to explain to a bishop that this leal of a man or this leal of a woman has done this, 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 that. And at a point, it looks like what you are saying does not justify your anger. You embellish. You add to it. And in the process of talking about leal, because you're trying to justify your anger, you become a different person because you end up gossiping, which makes you a gossip. You end up slandering, which makes you a slanderer. You end up either backbiting, exaggerating, or like I said, embellishing because now it feels like what you are saying still does not justify your anger. So what do you do? You top it off that I cannot still really explain what this guy did to me. You've become a malicious person. So without even being aware that 
in trying to explain and talk about the records of wrongs we have against Leo, we've left our places of honor and descended into this person that we do not even know that we are becoming. See, it becomes a downward spiral. Our text today brings us freedom from such free fall. When Paul says, love does not keep a record of wrongs, he's calling us back to the place of forgiveness. The love of God in us does not keep records of wrong because love is busy forgiving. Your records of wrongs makes an offender a perpetual source of offense, resentment, and bitterness. Because I cannot forget and f forgive this person for the offense, for the things he has done, the more I keep reciting it, I keep remembering it, I keep recalling it, whatever the word you want to use, the more that person becomes an offense to me, a source of resentment to me, a source of bitterness to me, eventually I become ensnared in my own unforgiveness. One capable, that, that, that snare is now capable of ensnaring you in your past, crippling your future and gifting a different person to your future. Like I just said, because of the wrongs, the records we keep, the many things, this is what my husband did, this is what my wife did, this is what my children did, we are not able to let it go. So you keep talking about it, you keep reciting it, you keep gossiping, but biting, you, you literally become a malicious person. Once bitterness sets in, there is no limit to whom you can become. Very soon you'll be sitting side by side with the devil and you'll still not be aware. Our records of wrongs shapes us into a different person and redefine our future. But the expression of the love of God in us brings us forgiveness from that snare. Forgiveness is something we all like to receive, but we don't like to give. Two questions this week that I kept asking myself is, or are, who are the, who are the people whose records of wrongs we keep? I think they are the people most closest I think they are the people closest and dearest to us. I don't know what you think. And the second question I keep asking, I kept asking was, can we truly forgive and delete those records of wrongs? What do you think? Can you, sitting right now before God, truly forgive and delete the records of wrongs you have against the many people, with, or the one person, or, I don't know the, your number. Can you truly forgive and delete it? Because that's the demand God is placing on us, on our text, from our text this morning. Jesus said, offenses are inevitable. And if you look at our closest relationships, that's actually where the offenses lie. And he said, no matter how many times, in one day, your brother sins against you and says, I'm sorry, I am changing, forgive me. You must forgive him each and every time. That's, those are the words from the mouths of Jesus. Peter must have had this in mind when he approached Jesus and asked him, yes, Lord, how many times shall I forgive someone who keeps offending me? More like, Lord, how many times shall I keep letting Leo go off the hook? Seven times. And Jesus looked at Peter and said, not seven times, but 70 times, seven times. Some versions say 77 times. But if you look at 70 times, 7 times, you look at 499 times, he's speaking to an innumerable number of times. He's speaking to you coming to live a life of forgiveness where you gift, you have a disposition of forgiveness. So he was telling Peter, don't worry about counting. Don't worry about keeping the records. Focus on forgiving. Just focus on offering forgiveness. Today, he's not talking to Peter. He's talking to you. He's talking to me. He wants us to inculcate an attitude of forgiveness that is limitless. And he wants us to begin by deleting, getting rid of our records of wrongs. You know, keeping tally of what so -so person did and this person is a, is a human thing to do. Forgiveness is a God thing to do. If you look at the way God forgives our sins, he doesn't keep a list of them. The Bible says he actually covers them, removes them from us, cancels every debt associated with them, and intentionally forgets them. We are begotten of God to live like God. We are created to be like our Father, to reflect Jesus in the, in the way we live our lives. So this call to forgiveness, the call to forgive and delete our records of wrong is God himself speaking to his beloved children 
to live out their God-created identity. So today I want to urge this assembly and urge the body of Christ, wherever you're listening to me from, go ahead and forgive because you've been forgiven. Be gracious because you have experienced and you have received grace. Give patience because God has been patient with you. I don't know whether you've sat down and seen and looked into your life and discovered that, girl, you've messed up big time. And then you see the patience of God that God has been waiting for you to come to that awareness. God has been patient with us. He's borne our injury so we can bear the injury of others. And today he's asking us to imitate him as his beloved children and intentionally delete our records of wrongs. So I will urge spouses, go ahead, delete your, your husband or your wife's record of wrongs. All those things we say, you are always, she is never, he is always, delete it. Delete the records you have against your children. Delete all the, he is ungrateful, she is use, useless, delete it because you are still speaking upon that child. Delete the records you hold against your parents. He wasn't there, daddy was never home. Mommy never listened, she didn't pay attention, delete it. Just press delete. Delete the records you hold against your classmates or your class prefect. She's always writing my name in noise making. When her friends are making noise, delete it. Delete the records you, call, you have that contains every negative thing that someone has ever said to you. How can you keep that in you and expect to go far? That you, you, when you sit to talk, you remember that in 1991, this is how your grandmother said this. And in 2001, this is how your auntie said this. And now in your house, this is what you have said. You're keeping that in your head. You have not kept what God has said concerning you. Delete the records you hold of all the negative things, whether perceived or real, that you think people have ever said about you. Because so long as you carry those records, you will not receive the wholeness, the freedom, the life. You will not live the full life that God offers. Delete the records you have against your bosses, your leaders. Delete the records you have against your neighbors. That neighbor prays too loud. Their generator is too close to my window. The ones you have against your relatives. Certain aunties that just want to marry you off yesterday, delete that record. They come to the house that wonder why are you so fat? Why are you not tall? Why are you not this? Delete it. Don't, don't pile it up. Because guess who is being imprisoned? It's not that aunt. It's not that uncle. It is you that is being limited. And guess who, whose witness cannot be made manifest? It's not that woman. It's yours. So delete every record you have against everyone because you and I have been, have been called to forgive as God forgives. Go ahead and release the people who have abused you. Release the people who have offended you. Release the people who have sinned against you. For guess what? In releasing them, you release yourself and embrace the wholeness that Christ offers. As we rise to take our confessions this morning, I have a task for this house. I want you to go back home make a list if you have to but pray for everyone who has ever hurt you everyone who has ever offended you who's ever sinned against you that you can still remember and that when you remember it still hurts you pray for them what will you be saying ask God to bless them don't send thunder it will not fire them don't send lightning it will not appear why the God you are praying to wants them saved so if he did not curse them on the cross, how do you think he will curse them for stepping on your leg? So pray God to bless them. And in the future, when you encounter Leels, and you encounter people who offend you, and you encounter people who hurt you, who, who sin against you, who make it difficult for you to forgive them, and they are unrepentant, the key is this. Take them to God in prayer. Pray until you feel the blessing flow from here. At the beginning, it will be very difficult. But pray until you feel that release come from your bowels and you know that everything in you is blessing them. At that point, that power of unforgiveness will leave you and help will be released for you to truly forgive. May we rise as we take our confessions this morning. For we have been called to forgive as we have been forgiven. Say with me, I am begotten of love to manifest love. I let go of every pain, anger, 
and frustration. I choose the freedom that forgiveness brings. Say it like you mean it. I give no place to the devil. The enemy will not take advantage of me. I sincerely work at getting along with other people. And with God. The root of bitterness shall never find expression in me. Say, I am an ambassador of Christ. I love as Christ loves me. I am kind and compassionate to other people. I am patient because God has been patient with me. I am gracious because I have received grace. I forgive as Christ has forgiven me. I show mercy as I am daily receive mercy. I am the God begotten. I am winning the war within myself. I was designed to reveal the Christ. God will be seen in me. I choose to accept people as they are and assume the best of them. I will no longer weaponize the mistakes of others. Never again will I take love lessons from the world. Neither will I sabotage my spiritual health with unforgiveness. I am a vessel of God's love in my world. My hands are his channels of mercy. My mouth is his portal of wisdom. My words bring out the best in people and minister grace to their hearts. I am attentive to the welfare of my innermost being. For it determines the course of my life. I refuse to let unforgiveness rob me. I will enjoy the full life God has designed for me. Open your mouth and say, Lord, I receive the grace to forgive as you have forgiven me. I receive the grace to love as you love me. I receive the grace to be a channel, a, a vessel of your love to my world. That you will be seen in me, you will be heard in me. You will be seen in me, you will be heard in me. That grace, the grace of your love will be seen in the spirit of forgiveness will walk freely in me. Open your mouth and tell God I let go of everyone that I've imprisoned in my heart. And I take back everything that unforgiveness has taken from me. Today I receive your forgiveness. Today I receive the spirit of love. Today I receive the grace to walk as you walk. To see as you see. To do as you do. Amen. Rita, 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 Rita,